Now, if we move on to our partial claims, we're going to be doing something a little bit differently. An I claim is that some SRP. So, it might be something like some bananas are tasty things. Okay. Some bananas are tasty things. So we have our B circle and our T circle representing bananas and tasty things. And we don't want to claim something about all bananas because we don't know whether all of them are tasty or just some of them. Okay. So we don't want to shade out a whole area because that would be what we do for a universal claim. But this is just about part of the category of bananas. So if some bananas are tasty things, then we're saying something about uh, at least one member of the class of bananas, and we're saying that at least one member that's a banana is also a tasty thing. All right, so we're dealing with something that's both in the banana circle on the left and the tasty thing circle on the right. So if we're doing that, we're dealing with the intersection between bananas and tasty things. We don't want to shade it out because that would mean that nothing is there. We want to say that at least one thing is there. So instead of shading it out for partial claims, what we're going to do is we're going to use an X for an I claim, which is a positive partial claim, some SRP. We put an X right in the middle because we're saying there is this intersection between the the subject term and the predicate term. There is something that's there. There may be something on the left. There may be something on the right. We don't know. Remember, empty spaces represent possibility. There could be something there. There could not be something there. Okay? But we know based on this claim, if this claim is true, that there is something right in the middle there. Let's see if we have enough room for an O claim. O claim, come on down. Some S are not P. I can probably see that better, if at all. Some S are not P. Now, this time I remember the example I used before. Some dinners are not Oh, I've got tasty there. We've got filling here. Filling meals. Now, I want you to think about why we can't just say not filling. Now, not filling makes sense grammatically, but there's a certain reason I mentioned earlier, which I'm refraining from saying now, why we need to add something like meals on there, or at least things. Okay, so... Some dinners are not filling meals. Let's represent those categories. D for dinners. And F for filling meals. All right, so we're claiming something about dinners. So we want to start off in the D circle. Start off with where your, your subject is. Always start off with that. So we're saying something about the D circle. And we're saying that at least one member of the dinner category is not also a member of the filling meal category. Now, the only place for something to be a dinner, so that's in the D circle, but outside of the filling meal circle is right here in the first spot on the left. And we're saying that at least one thing is there. So we're not doing shading now. Remember, you only shade for universal claims. Since this is a partial claim, we have to use an X. 
So we want to say that something is over here on the left, saying it is a dinner and it is not a filling meal. It is in the D circle, it is not in the F circle. Right. So I want you to keep in mind that universal claims use shading. Partial claims use X's. And you always want to start out in your subject, subject circle when you're figuring out what to do. Note that every single thing I've done here has some activity involved in the subject circle. So over here, the subject is cats. In our cat circle, we've shaded something on the left part of it. Over here, potatoes is our subject. We've only done something in the potato circle. It also happens to be in the hairy animal circle, the age circle, but we know it's going to be at least in the subject circle. Over here for an I claim, we're in the subject circle, which was bananas. It's also in the tasty things circle, but you know it's, it's always going to be in the subject circle. And over here, it's in the subject circle as well for dinners. All right. Now, a couple more things to note about these. Something that's a bit more advanced. Notice that some of these Venn diagrams are symmetric. They have this nice bilateral symmetry. Um, right down the middle you can split it, fold it in half, it would match up. Same thing with this one here. But the ones on the outside, the A and the O claim, they don't have that symmetry. So if you were to split them down the middle, fold them in half, they wouldn't match up. They look different on either side. Now, this reveals something to us uh, visually that we might figure out just by tinkering around with these things otherwise. So if you have this sort of symmetry in the Venn diagrams, that represents something that you can do with the subject and predicate terms of a claim. With E claims, you can switch around the subject term and the predicate term and it's still going to be true if the original claim was true. Same thing with the I claim. So for instance, if no potatoes are hairy animals for your E claim, then it's also true that no hairy animals are potatoes. <laughs> for your I claim, if some bananas are tasty things, then you also know it's true that some tasty things are bananas. That doesn't work out for an A claim. Even though it might feel like it should, it doesn't. And the diagram shows us that. So if all cats are orange things, that doesn't mean, it doesn't entail or imply that all orange things are cats. That's not going to be true necessarily. It could be true, but we don't know it's true for sure. So it could be that it's true that all cats are orange things, but there are also other orange things, such as oranges. Over here, some dinners are not filling meals. All right, that may be true, but does that mean that some fill filling meals are not dinners? Okay. Well, it seems like it might be, but we don't want to think about how things are in our world. We want to think about what has to be the case if this is true. Now, imagine that there's a world in which people only have dinners. That's their only meal. All right. In that case, some filling meals are not dinners. Is that true? Well, let's see. In that world where all of the meals are dinners, well, no. It's not going to be true that some filling meals are not dinners because there's no other kind of meal for a filling meal, meal to be. So we don't know that the, the converse where we switch the subject and predicate is true for an O claim or an A claim, but we do for an E claim and an I claim. Okay, that's a bit more advanced, but you should be thinking about that sort of thing, so stay on it. Until next time, when we start to explore the wondrous, magical world of Venn diagramming whole arguments. In fact, categorical syllogisms. So, look forward to that. I'll see you then.